Righto. Looks like we have most of the people that are going to be jumping on uh, in the session now. So I think it's time to get things started. Uh, firstly, g'day and welcome to everyone that's uh, managed to jump on for this uh, third session. And yeah, it looks like we've got a few people joining us from, uh, from all across the country here. So thank you for, for jumping on. Uh, just going to quickly pop up a quick poll just before we get started. Uh, this being our final session for the, the Livestock uh, Reconciliation Workshop Series. Uh, we're just going to put a quick poll here just to see what you guys might be interested about learning next. Uh, so we've got a few options here around our grazing management or audit compliance options. And then also just the, the cadence that you might like these sessions. Um, so we've, we've done this, this webinar session here. We've run three sessions um, on Thursday once a week for the last three weeks. And we're just seeing if that might be, um, you know, better suited to do a few sessions over one week or if you're liking the current, um, current cadence that we've got, we've got going on. So we'll just leave that poll up for a few minutes while we do a bit of a recap. And then, yeah, we'll just uh, look at the results of that when we, when we get to the end of that that there. So firstly, again, thank you guys for joining this uh, third and final session um, of the three-part series. Uh, my name is Edward McGeek and I'll be hosting today. Um, and also from AgriWeb, we've got Jody Davis joining the workshop again, um, as well as Dave O'Brien, who's uh, in the background, he'll be facilitating some discussions and, and answering questions as we go along. Um, so as you've probably heard, if you join the, the first two sessions, um, please feel free to use the chat function that you'll see there uh, to let us know, you know, where you're tuning in from today, or if you have any our questions and then also that Q&A uh, option that you have there. If you've got any specific questions as we're going along um, with any of the content we'll be covering, feel free to just chuck something in there and we'll either get back to that live during the session or Dave will yet yeah, respond in the background for you as well. Uh, so yeah, as you can see with our agenda, so we're just going to do a little bit of a welcome. We'll do a quick recap on the previous two sessions that we've had. Uh, then we'll dive into some of those uh, transactional records, which is the final piece of, of input within AgriWeb for those uh, livestock reconciliation reports. Then we'll look at just a, a few case study examples of how you can actually use these and, and, and real examples of this, this instance. And then time for some questions at the end as well um, you might want to go through. So again, uh, thank you for, for joining through and just a quick recap on the first session uh, that we ran. So we had um, two of the country's leading advisors in Ian McLean and John Francis uh, join us uh, for the first session, which was really looking at talking about the why around livestock reconciliations and why it's important for your business to make sure that you are uh, producing these reports. And that session set the scene for the set the scene for the livestock reconciliation report, um, and then also you know what benefits you can derive for your business going forward from actually reconciling and having those accurate numbers. So both John and Ian raised some powerful points. Uh, John centered his points around the fact that a, a livestock reconciliation is fundamental to all business, um, and you cannot actually understand you know your true business performance without it. Um, so he was saying that it's the the cornerstone of of you know, seeing your financial accountability towards performance analysis for your stock. Um, and then also for deriving certain key metrics, as you can see here, such as your, you know, your financial production and profitability um, from that gross profit through to your operating profits and your operating returns uh, as well. Uh, on top of that, he also then said that it allows you to build on your production and performance metrics. Um, as a few here that, that were listed from the slides you've taken from, from his presentation, um, they can be such as, you know, your cost per kilo of live weight gained uh, on farm, your kilogram of live weight per hectare, uh, and also looking at your, your feed and your business efficiency uh, as a whole, as you can see with some of those, um, you know, production versus business efficiency metrics uh, there as well. And then we also had Ian um, jump on as well, and he expanded on those points with more of a northern focus. Um, and he talked about the importance of the livestock reconciliation uh, stemming from the need to have an effective system in place uh, to ensure you've got accountability for all your on-farm records. Uh, so that, that notion of accurately reconciling your numbers um, is really a building block um, for understanding that business performance. So a few of the examples he was providing there was around your stocking rate and your kilograms produced. Um, and that is the first step to ultimately knowing your profit through driving that business income uh, from these reconciled reports. He then also says that, you know, knowing this uh, allows you to then utilise past performance and you can actually identify areas and opportunities to improve within your business going forward. Um, and then what was reiterated, I guess, throughout both of their, their sessions was the value of, of gaining from these reports is only as good as what you actually do. So, you know, developing those good habits and becoming efficient at calculating and reconciling those numbers uh, ensures that it does become a smooth process uh, for your own operation. 
And then these, uh, I guess, notions were expanded in the second session, which took more of a dive into AgriWeb's, uh, I guess, production side of, of records. But we also spoke with Anna Appleton, who's one of our early customers who's been implementing and, and utilising these uh, livestock reconciliation reports uh, on farm in their own operation. Um, and I guess what we heard from her was the initial reason around implementing AgriWeb stemmed from their current system of their paper records. Um, they had several distant, different systems in place across the various properties. Um, and that constant need to chase up information really drove them to try and look for that consolidated system where that data was, was easy to be accessed uh, whenever it was needed. Um, so she echoed John and Ian a lot in saying that the, the main driver is also understanding the importance of why those on the ground need to input this data and what we can achieve with that data going forward. Um, so they currently aim at producing those quarterly reports um, and they have that efficient system in place um, for, you know, uh, producing annually for any various accreditation schemes, but also just knowing their own reconciled numbers uh, across the board. Um, and then she finally mentioned that it does, in fact, play a big part in tracking their operating profit. Um, and they share these reports directly with their financial stakeholders uh, and bank managers uh, to provide visibility into the day-to-day -day operations uh, for those guys. And one of the added benefits there, she was saying, was um, having the ability to, to understand what's occurring on farm for those stakeholders that may not be actively involved, um, which means that they can then produce that information that's readily available and they get a clear indication of, of you know, what's going on, what's happening on farm at that, that point in time. So that's certainly a, an added benefit that she was, she was touching on when we spoke with her. And then we also finally looked at covering those production reports within AgriWeb if you, um, if you join that session. So how you can actually input those specific records such as you know, interpreting that report, um, updating your age classes and your management tags, uh, updating your DSE and, and AE within the system, and then the whole natural increase process through from your, your joining records into your scanning, marking records, your weaning, and then finally those aging records as well. Um, so that's a, a bit of a quick recap on what we ran through in those first two sessions. Uh, if you haven't seen them, they are up on, on the website. You will be able to watch those back. Um, they certainly give some good insight uh, into the, the significance of these reports and, and why it is beneficial for your operation. Um, quickly, just touching on those, uh, those polls that we, we looked at before, we'll just um, end that there. And yeah, thank you for everyone. We had you know, great um, results there. Looks like the, the few sessions over a few weeks are certainly a favourite with um, yeah, over 97 of you uh, thinking that that was the best option. And then it was quite an even split between the grazing and the, the audit compliance uh, options for, for a next upcoming workshop. So now that I've kind of touched on that um, production uh, record there, I'll pass over to Jody now um, just to go through some of those transactional records within AgriWeb that also pull through to that livestock reconciliation report. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Ed. And welcome back to everyone from last week and hello to everyone who might be joining us for the first time this week. Um, before I jump in, I can see that Ben's raised his hand. Um, not sure if, Ben, you've got a question there or if you wanted to pop it in the chat or the Q&A. Um, can he talk at all, Ed? Uh, not sure he's on mute there, but yeah, if you do have a question, um, feel free just to prop it in that, that Q&A and we can address that, yeah, as soon as that, that comes through. Awesome. We've, we've got a few people raising their hands, so I'm not sure if you're able to use the, um, uh, awesome, it might have just been an accident there. Awesome. So I'll kick off where we stopped last week, um, and that is on the mobile app. Um, I'll just share share my mobile here awesome see that you can see that now ed yep. yeah that's all all coming through clearly okay great so um our transactional records here include death sales, purchases, and transfer records. Um, so first of all, we're going to apply a death record. Uh, so we come to our farm map, click on our mob icon. We're going to go to view details of the mob that we're trying to place a death record on. We come down to more where all our action records are. And we go to death. So here our uh, required fields are our date of death and also the number of deaths. Uh, so we can toggle between either a, a head count 
or a mortality rate. We also have the option here to add in um, further details, um, which include your cause of deaths and also some costs that might have been involved. So for this mob here, we're going to say that one head died today and save that down. So we'll now be able to see in this mob's history, a death record of one head. So the next step that we're going to show is the uh, placing a sale record. So if we do the same way, we come to our mob, tap on the view details for this mob, come to more, and we're now going to select sale. Uh, so for the uh, required fields here, we need the sale date and also the number of head. So if we flick over now to the details tab up the top is where we have our um, advanced fields. Um, so this is a key thing to note as this pulls directly through to our livestock reconciliation report is that we saw last week is the column of condemned. So this is where we can place any number of deaths or um, head condemned here that have occurred during the um, transportation of these animals. So that's where we place that there um, and any other um, costs related to this sale record can be placed. Then we save that record down. And again, up the top in the history of this mob, we'll see a sale record. We can go back into this sale record or death record by tapping on the record. And here is where we can go down the bottom, edit, um, delete the record if required, um, or potentially pop in some extra notes that we might want to note here. So I'll close out of that one. Uh, so the next record we want to place is a purchase. Um, so for a purchase, it's essentially adding a new mob with the origin um, being purchased. So on our farm map, we need to ensure that up the top we have selected livestock. Come down the bottom to our green plus icon. Here we select the type. So I've selected sheep. So I've purchased um, a mob of ewes. We fill in the required uh, fields here. So mob size, your breed, the option of a management tag, our date of birth, age class, our mob name, our dry sheep equivalent, our average weight, the paddock that we are going to pop these mob into, the date they entered into this mob, our tag color, and then here where it says origin is where we need to select between bred or purchased. So for this mob we have just purchased, I'm going to select purchased. That then brings up the further details uh, that are required or are optional for a purchase record. So for a purchase, the required fields here are your date on farm. So the day that they arrived on the farm and also your price. So obviously further details um, allow you to do further reporting, um, but it's just the required fields to actually save down this record. At the time, might, uh, of sorry, I might jump yeah. in there, Jody. We just had a, a question pop through from from Craig, um, just do with the sale records that you were looking at before, and he just asked um, when we make a sale, you may sell multiple um, lots or mobs of livestock, uh, but your fees and commission and levy is against the whole mob. Um, is there an easy way to enter that information? Yeah, sure. So I might just jump back. Um,
to our sale record here. Um, so, sorry, Ed, the question really here was um, if we're doing multiple mobs, was it? Yes, yeah, that's correct. But like a consolidated commission levy against that whole group. Yeah, yeah sure. So here where we popped in the sale date, um, our number of head transported, we'll add in other mobs that we may want to um, also include on this purchase. I mean, sale record, sorry. So there you can see we've got our two mobs. Um, we can add in our uh, number of head for those two mobs. And then we go to our um, details page where we will pop in if they are the same um, further fields here. And that will be applied to both those mobs that we have selected in the same record. Perfect. I think that covers that hopefully. But yeah, if you have any other additional questions on top of that, feel free to just chuck those back in as well. Awesome. Thanks for that, Ed. Okay, so I will go back to our um, purchase record. So we have um, added our new mob in by the green plus down the bottom here. And ensured that we, for our origin, have chosen purchased. So then they, this mob that have been purchased will show up in our bought column in our livestock reconciliation report. Uh, our next um, record is our transfers. So transfers can occur between farms that are on the same um, AgriWeb account, um, or if you're just trying to transfer um, a mob off farm. So we'll go to our um, mob that we are wanting to transfer to another one of our farms that I have on my AgriWeb account. So we will tap on the mob. We go to view details. We'll go to more again with all our actions and we have our transfer button. So this is where we select our required fields, which are departure date. Our animals within this mob that we have selected on the farm map. If we are also wanting to select other mobs, we'll then come to here, select mobs. And this brings up all our mobs that I can select that are also on the farm. So we have our further details here if, um, we have an NVD with the transfer between the two uh, properties and also our transfer details, which is where we need to select transfer between farms in AgriWeb. So this is where we have the option uh, to transfer between our two farms in AgriWeb or a basic transfer record, which is just creating these, uh, a record for these livestock to leave um, the farm. So we'll be off farm. So I'm going to transfer to another farm in AgriWeb. Here I'll then have our drop down selection of my farms. If they, there is further details, we can pop in here for our pick or uh, name, and then uh, we can place a value here as well. So I am just going to pop in a, um, make sure a date is there so I can save down this record and our number of head. So I'm gonna show you how you can now uh, see this uh, record. So I'm going to close out here. I'm going to come down to menu livestock movements AgriWeb transfers. And then in because I've sent my mob of 100 head to uh, Pip's farm, it will be my outgoing. So as you can see here, there's the transfer of my 100 use. It is in pending. 
as uh, Pip needs to then accept in her incoming. So she will see um, a pending incoming transfer. She will then accept. My outgoing will then uh, be complete and remove those animals off farm and will now be on Pip's farm. So there's no questions around that one come in yet, Ed? No, it doesn't look like it. I think it's yeah, explained pretty well. So hopefully that's um, yeah straightforward for most of the people on. Awesome. So I'll just um, take a step back and probably just um, iterate for all those records um, that I didn't mention within the deaths um, as well. We'll go more. that you have got the add mobs piece there as well. So you are able to add all, um, more mobs when placing the one record down. So it will show like I demonstrated within the SAL record, you can add multiple mobs into the record uh, to save a bit of time here and apply the different records. And then your details page, you will only have to enter in once. Awesome. So if we um, haven't got any questions there, Ed, we might um, flick over to the web app and we can demonstrate how to um, apply your sale, purchase and transfer records from the web app. Yep. Um, there is one quick question um, and I think this might have been covered in the last session, but we might just quickly touch on it here if you want. But it's just, um, can you just step us through the process of, of adding calves bred on farm? So I think just the, the distinction between the bread versus purchased option um, on that, that mob creation would probably yeah, cover that if that's right. Yeah, sure. So on our farm map page, again, we just need to ensure that you are on your livestock up the top here. Um, because if you toggle between livestock and paddocks, we lose our green plus button um, as this is to add um, paddocks and infrastructure. So make sure you're on your livestock tab up the top. Our green plus icon will be down the bottom. We'll then choose our um, stock class. So here is where we might pop in Twenty head of Angus, date of birth, do you see weight? And then we get down to our um, origin piece and we are going to select bread. There you'll see no further fields come up down the bottom that do when you choose between your purchase. Perfect. Yeah, so I think that's, I guess, the concept of when you're initially adding those stock if they are bread. I think from that next point, if you're trying to create that, say, marking record on top of the, um, the calves that were bred, um, we did actually yeah, cover that in, in last the last session, but we'll also show you at the end of this session how you can look at the, um, the Agrib Academy, which allows you to actually yeah, view some of those specific marking records, um, which also might yeah, add to, to your question that you just posed there as well. Yeah, sure, Ed, as well. Um, so if you've got the uh, you or lamb, um, sorry, the you or cow mob, and if they are bred, um, we place them off a marking record. So then we will go to view details, more, and we have our mark option here. So marking will create uh, the lambs or calves at foot and link them to the um, ewes or cow mob. So that was just a little bit of a quick rehash um, that we went through with the marking record in last week's session. And as Ed just mentioned, um, we'll touch on the AgriWeb Academy at the end, which will show you and demonstrate how to quickly reference um, a marking record for you to go back at a later date.
Perfect. Um, before we jump across onto the, the web app, we just got one more question here from Kieran. It was, uh, is it possible to, to retrieve a mob and its associated history that has been transferred off farm to a farm that does not have AgriWeb? Um, so I'm happy to, to take that one for you. So in this instance, if you were sending a, a basic transfer record um, not to a farm that's associated with AgriWeb, um, what will actually happen is whilst you do send that mob off and will no longer appear on your farm, um, you will actually still be able to see all the records that are associated to that specific mob whilst it was on farm. So say, for example, if you'd applied a treatment record to it or it was a, a previous purchase record, uh, that purchase record will always still exist in your reports um, historically. So whilst that mob you know, may no longer be beyond there, um, you'll still be able to see all of that kind of production history that was associated with it. Um, if for some reason you were wanting to actually reinstate that mob, say, back onto the um, back onto the account then by all means that's something that we could certainly help out with but yeah if it's more just a perspective of just being able to still see and retrieve that history that was associated with it once um, you will yet yeah, be able to, to view that um, in various places in the reports uh, on the, the web app hopefully that yeah covers that question for you awesome thanks Ed uh, so I just wanted to check can you see my uh, web app screen now yep that's coming across Right. So for our uh, sale, purchase and transfer records, these can also be entered uh, from your web app. Um, so here I have um, for our first of all sale record, we're going to come to our reports and we're going to come to our sale records. Here is where uh, we'll see all our sale records. Um, so we can see previous records, but up the top corner, we'll see the blue button, which says new sale. So here we can select there. And this is, will bring up the same screen uh, as viewed on the mobile app, where we can input our sale date, uh, our mobs selected. So select our mobs from our mob list which we can also select multiple, add in our number of head, our buyer, and we also have our advanced field option, which is all quite uh, similar to the mobile app as well. So next for our purchase record, it is the same as displayed on the mobile app also. We're going to go to our farm map. We're going to go to our green add button, mob and select our uh, stock class. So I'm going to select sheep. I need to now select uh, which paddock they are going to go into. So I'm just, as you can see, my cursor is now a plus button. So I'm going to tap on my lagoon paddock. Uh, this is where we put in the details um, for our mob description. And our origin up the top here is where we choose between bread or purchased. So I'm going to select purchased. Then we have the same required fields, which is date on farm, price per head. So once I save that down, it will pop up with the new icon in my paddock that I've tapped on. And also show in our uh, purchase records report and pull through to our livestock rec report. So uh, the third one is our transfers. So for our transfers, I'm going to come to our movements on my side panel here. So I'm going to uh, send a mob to another farm. So that is outgoing. So I'm going to transfer to my outgoing. And then here's where we can see uh, actions here. view and edit. Outgoing is where we can also view and edit.
Awesome, Ed. So has any questions popped in there at all, Ed? Uh, not to do with the, the way out there. We did have one, though, that was just kind of touching on potentially the, the death records there as well. And it's um, just looking at um, what about when you're marking lambs that die during the lambing process as you're going out checking in the paddock? Um, and I think a good answer for that question would be um, recommended, I guess, best practice there is creating that marking record with those initial numbers. But as Jody was showing before, you've got the notes section attached to say your, your mob of views or your maternal mob there. Just, um, just jotting down those um, those deaths, I guess, you know, as you're out checking during that marking period in the paddock, how many you are seeing there, you'll have the date recorded against that as well. Um, and then just when you actually do go in and create that marking record, just creating your marking record with the total numbers, including those that, that, um, that died during that period, and then going back and creating a, a death record, um, following that marking record with the, the appropriate numbers that died during during lambing. And then when you're going in and putting in your um, your reasoning behind those uh, those deaths is, you know, putting that in as, you know, lost during, during lambing etc um, and that's I guess probably one of the, the easiest ways in this case to try and start to record some of those yet yeah, deaths in the paddock um, during that lambing process and marking process. Awesome so I'll stop uh, sharing if you wanted to flick back to your um, slides. Yep perfect so thank you Jody. that hopefully gave everyone a pretty good um, understanding of the transactional records that go into the, the livestock reconciliation report. Um, as Jody was saying, all of those records that we've just ran you through um, will automatically pull through to that report and they are respective columns that you are able to look at, um, which obviously all provide a pretty clear uh, indication into your you know, inventory value changes across the board um, based that on you know, deaths, any sales and purchases that you are bringing on farm. Um, and there are obviously certain scenarios where that can be quite relevant to be able to, to see that specific information um, you know, when you're going in and generating these reports, whether that be, you know, quarterly or, or annually or et cetera. Um, so once we've, you know, if we don't have any other questions at the moment, just around some of those specific records, we thought we'd dive in and just do a little bit of a, I guess, recap on some of the livestock reconciliation pieces that we've covered today um, and just provide a little bit of a, I guess, a, a case study example of, of how various operations might try and utilise that livestock report in terms of, you know, what information you'd want to pull out, looking at some of the specific filtering that you might be applying onto this report to try and get that information as concise as possible um, for your, you know, your own performance recording, or if it is something that you are going to be providing to those, you know, financial advisors and bank managers going forward as well. Um, so, you know, over the last two sessions, we've covered all of those records that will potentially pull through from that joining through to ageing, um, as we looked at before, and today, those deaths, purchases, transfers and sales. Um, so now that you've got that strong understanding, um, let's just dive in and look at a specific example. So I'll, I'll pass back to Jody for that first example. And it's just going to be looking at, um, say, a family owned operation and how they might utilise that, um, that livestock reconciliation report. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, so as you just mentioned, I guess we're taking this uh, as a bit of an approach, family owned mixed farming uh, enterprise requiring a livestock rec report uh, on an end of financial year basis. So I'm going to come to, um, I'll show you how to quickly first navigate to our livestock report. So we come to our reports. Under our production reports, here is our livestock rec report. Uh, so I'm going to come up to our date range. I'm going to select financial year. I'm going to customize my columns. And I'm just going to select my type. So I want to see bull, cattle, sheep and rams broken down. My breed, I'm going to tick my age class and going to remove my management tag as I want to just see a breakdown of uh, my type breed and age class. I'm going to remove uh, management tags in and out and also remove my DSC loading kilos as I just really want an overview of my closing head and the breakdown. So here we can see uh, we've got our type, breed, age class, starting head, uh, any that have been uh, purchased, our bred, aged in and out. So we've got some um, calves here that have now become uh, weaners and steers, uh, heifer weaners and heifer steers, sorry. Any that have been sold, um, any deaths, 
transferred on and off farm, and more importantly here, our closing head. So for the end of the financial year, our closing head numbers. So what might this report also make it a little bit easier is coming up the top and group by. So here I'm going to uh, group by type. So here I can further see a little bit clearer for my bulls, my age class, what has occurred through that financial year and then my closing head. So I can easily report and send numbers to um, for accounting purposes, et cetera. So uh, throughout the year, I've run, uh, I guess, most of my years um, as mixed tag mobs. So for some um, might be running your tag colors correlating to birth year. Uh, so for I'm going to come up and customize my columns. Uh, add in tag, save. So here it just adds in your tag color and then you can see um, your year if you're correlating your tag color with your birth year. Awesome, Ed. So uh, that's that was my case study there. If any questions have come come through, uh, doesn't look like we have any questions at the moment, which hopefully is a good sign. It means everyone's understanding what's uh, what's going on at the moment. By the third session, hopefully you guys are pretty comfortable with this this livestock reconciliation report. Uh, so I guess the the final or second case study we might just quickly look at is is that example of say a, a corporate situation where you might have some you know financial stakeholders involved. Um, you might have more of a, a bit of a rigorous process around these reports and it might be say a monthly a monthly basis so again you just dive into that that date range at the top you'd select you'd select last month in this case and what you often find is this is depending on how you're utilizing a lot of these fields in your own operation but the management tag field um, so if you're using that management tag field as potential grouping um, scenarios for your stock then obviously the management tag field is a significant um, significant point to add into these reports to generate more of a concise I guess stock classing or stock grouping analysis beyond just that age class situation so in this case you'd turn on you know your type your breed and just that management tag level um, beyond that you then look at your, your specific values we'd add those management tag changed in and out so if you've got them say going from uh, from joiners into breeders for example you want to see those numbers that are shifting across there uh, if you want to see if they're going from weaners up into joiners etc you can start to see those um, those specific breakdowns as well and then from I guess production standpoint if you're wanting to really drive and maximize your you know your productivity and your efficiency you'd look at adding in those you know you're starting and you're closing loads um, across the board and also you're starting and closing weights so you can start to see you know what kilos you've produced within that period of time alongside just those opening and closing balances of, of stock on farm effectively so as you look at this report here now effectively showing the same numbers that you would have seen in that previous one but just a different I guess level of analysis so when you're looking here you can see my management tags I've got my commercial bulls um, broken down into my you know wieners calves and then I've also got say my trade steers um, versus my uh, you know you've got your joiners etc and things in there so in that situation if you are potentially running that you know mixed operation where you've got a, a breeding side of things and then another maybe commercial um, just restock trading operation on the side that management tag can really be that next level beyond just saying I've got you know 100 steers and 100 heifers you know that say 50 of those heifers are in that replacement herd. The other 50 are going to be sold off to restockers. This is where that management tag starts to become a relevant field where you can start to utilise it um, to record to that level. Um, and then I guess on top of that, the last step within these ones, say you are wanting to really try and drive that um, proficiency, especially if it is, say, a trading operation. If you were to scroll across and look at your, um, your starting and your closing load, but also your starting and closing weight, you can start to see what your actual kilos produce throughout that time frame are. So here I can see that, you know, my starting balance, I had 215,000 kilograms um, of live weight on farm at that time. And then you see we've put on about 9,000 during that month. So it really lets you start to understand some of those key production metrics as we looked at with, um, with John previously around those, you know, live weight of kilos gained and things like that. So it really starts to drive a bit more of those decisions around, you know, how are we doing here? Also, what's your stocking load looking like? As you can see here with those DSE or AE adjustments, through those age classes and management groups, you can start to see what's the increase or decrease potentially in your stocking load throughout that period. And then that can again, start to drive into some of those other, other production metrics around, you know, what's my grazing efficiency like and things like that. So I guess 
as we harped on, it's that building block, you know, that, that first step of, of then beginning to understand that kind of full farm management uh, and full business performance uh, perspective with this report here. And I doesn't look like I've had any questions. Hopefully that was, um, was clear and it's given you a bit of an understanding on, I guess, some of those potential nuances around this report and how to use that filtering um, to get that specific information that you do want to get out of these. Um, the one thing I'll just touch on before I, I pass back to, um, to Jody is just, whilst this is, I guess, the, the fundamental, you know, numbers under management, really giving you that overview of your, your current inventory, that then starts to build out into some of those other production reports, which we're not going to specifically go into at the moment, but just, I guess, allude to for you guys to look at down the track, such as that, say, livestock cost of production report and also your livestock gross margin report. So this is where, as Jody was showing you with some of those sale records, where you actually put your sale prices in, you might put your levies or your transport costs in. Similar to with your, um, I guess your, say a treatment record, you're putting in your specific costs associated with those. This is where not only does it start to pull those, just your numbers and your inventory value change, but also your input costs and starting to generate some of those net profits that we were looking at before around your, your turnover. So once you look at say, taking into consideration your purchase price, your transport costs against that purchase, all of your treatments and potential feed input costs against that individual, and then your sale cost, your sale price at the end. So you can actually start to see some of those turnover values as well. So whilst we've looked at that livestock reconciliation report and shown that it really does give you that, that just once all concise overall view of what's actually going on with your numbers under management and that initial building block, by all means, start to utilise looking at some of these other production reports going forward that actually then start to apply a little bit more extra um, information around what's actually going on farm alongside that, that reconciliation report. So that's covered that there. It looks like we don't have uh, too many questions. So hopefully, you know, if you do have any other questions, feel free to, to raise it at any time. Hopefully that's just because you're understanding it, not because I'm going too quickly, but hopefully it's the, uh, it's the, the latter there. Um, so now I'll just quickly pass back over to Jody, as we were saying with, um, with a lot of this stuff here, if you do have any other additional, um, you know, queries about some of the records that we might have looked at, um, and you know, as some of those questions are raising around some of those marking records that we covered last session, um, I'll just pass back over to Jody so she can just show you a, a bit about the academy session uh, as well. Awesome, thanks, Ed. Um, yeah, here's where uh, I guess if you're not wanting to come back and watch our workshop videos, uh, the AgriWeb Academy is uh, something that I really wanna bring your attention to. Um, so it's an evolving learning resource space um, that we've created and we're continually working on um, to demonstrate actions with short videos. Um, so to access the AgriWeb Academy on your web app, we're gonna come down to our help, which is down the bottom on our left toolbar. And we can see AgriWeb Academy. So first time access to the AgriWeb Agri Academy, uh, you'll just be asked to sign up with your email and name. Uh, and then once you've done that the first time, each time you'll come to the AgriWeb Academy, you can simply click and it will flick you straight uh, to our AgriWeb Academy. Uh, so here you've got the option to choose selected courses. Um, and as you can see, we've got here our livestock reconciliation report. So this is a series of short videos stepping you through uh, each step that we've taken you um, pretty well through in the last two uh, workshops. Um, so you can break that down by short videos. It also asks you a couple of questions just to ensure that you've understood uh, what we've shown you in the video. The other awesome uh, tool here as well is our Academy Pathways. So up the top, you can choose between courses and pathways. So I'm gonna flick over to our Learning Pathways. And as you can see here at the moment, we've got uh, AgriWeb for Farm Hands and AgriWeb for Farm Managers. So really the difference here is just uh, taking a little bit further depth into the reporting side for our farm managers pathway. So our AgriWeb uh, for farm managers pathway does include our livestock reconciliation report course as well. So um, if you haven't checked this out, I strongly suggest um, using it. It's an awesome tool um, starting off and also going back 
um, each year as a bit of a refresher and also checking out if we've got any new videos and also if there's anything on there that um, isn't. Uh, as I said, it's an evolving uh, learning resource. So please uh, let us know if there's something on there that you find will be really valuable to you and we we'll, would be more than happy to create a course for you. Um, so if you aren't a current AgriWeb user and aren't able to access from within your AgriWeb account, you can also uh, jump onto our website. And it's simply in our resources, AgriWeb Academy. So you can access that as well if you're wanting to uh, learn a bit more in depth about um, anything to do with AgriWeb. Uh, Jody. Um, I guess just while we're on that screen there quickly, I might also flag just under that resources option there where the videos icon is. Um, obviously, we've hard on a bit about those two previous sessions that we've we've run across the last few weeks. And if you were by you know some reason unable to attend those, by jumping in here on the website, going to this videos option, uh, you will be able to go in and watch those those first two sessions. So you'll see them just underneath here with the the workshop session one and two. So by all means, please. Um, Go in there if you want to look at, say, the production side of the records, but also um, hear the, the wise words from, from John and Ian around, um, I guess, from a, a livestock advice perspective, why they deem you know, this report to be so important and, and what they would like to see generated out of such a report. Awesome. Thanks, Ed. And I guess uh, on that, um, with Harvest just around the corner, um, I'd love to also bring your attention to one of our latest courses um, that we will release very soon, which is our paddock and cropping management. So um, it will run you through all the ins and outs um, for your upcoming harvest and how to input that into your AgriWeb. Um, so be sure to check that out and let us know for any feedback. Perfect. And I've noticed we just got one last question or one other question here um, in the Q&A uh, section from Craig. And I think this is just back on some of those um, costs with your transports and transfers. So the question was, uh, is it possible to load default cost values uh, if you have internal costs for transport? Uh, so I guess look at this question here with your transfer records um there's no option i guess to, to automatically default a cost that will associate to each of those uh, records as you apply them um, but it is that field that is always present just at the bottom of your transfer record you can assign your additional costs and your transport costs and then also leave a note um, underneath that specific cost which will also um, attach across with that transfer record um, so hopefully that kind of covers you know with your internal transfer costs Whilst you can't deem a, you know, a specific mandatory value that will go each time, um, as you go and create those incoming or, or outgoing, um, those outgoing transfer records, you'll always have that option just to plug that specific cost you've got associated alongside that potential inventory value that you want to attribute to that stock that you are internally transferring between files. So that looks like it's covered most of the, the questions in the Q&A. Um, I'll just throw it out there for you know another minute or two if anyone has any other specific questions that might have just popped up or something you want to I guess you know rehash from um, this session uh, please feel free to just chuck that up quickly um, otherwise thank you guys for for joining the the last session um, hopefully you've enjoyed the, the workshop series it is something that we'd like to to continue doing and obviously driven by our um, customers um, interest in those new specific topics that we raised in the poll earlier we'll obviously try and drive that based on based on your um yeah, your your interest uh, going forward so yeah by all means if you yeah uh, are interested in in joining these we'll be running these on more of a regular basis so thank you for for jumping in on on these uh, we do have uh, another quick question there i think that was um spurred on by that little comment um is there a workshop or course around using the unders and overs method paddock for northern stations so there isn't a specific workshop series or workshop that we've we've gone through in that instance. Um, I think it is flagged briefly in our Livestock Reconciliation Report Academy course um, session uh, under your movements. Uh, so if you do jump in and take a look at that, we have one that's for you know merging and splitting and figuring out your, your numbers there. Um, but by all means, alongside these workshop series, uh, feel free to reach out. We can jump in, say, a one-on-one -on -one session to really dive into your you know specific queries that you do have. Um, and tailor it to your operation so that you know exactly um, the best yeah 
method to attack some of those at specific options and specific records. Perfect. So I guess um, that's all from my end. Um, thank you, Jody, again, um, as always. That certainly covered most of those topics that we wanted to look at. And yeah, thanks to all those guys that raised their hand and had any questions. It's always nice when you get a bit of um, interaction from you guys and we can, can try and get to those burning questions that you have in a live environment versus trying to get back to, uh, back to you online. So thank you all for, for jumping on. So I think if, if that's it, uh, we might call it there, give you guys a few minutes back in your day and hopefully you all uh, yeah, enjoy wherever you're tuning in from, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yes.